I was in a lot of pain and I was very broken. And it all started with him just needing some help. His mental state, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement mm -hmm. with August. I launched into an interaction mm -hmm. with August. What do you feel like um, you were looking for? I just wanted to feel good. Mm -hmm. It had been so long mm -hmm. since I felt good. What's the presupposition here? It's presupposed that Will didn't make her feel good, and Jada's drawn out speech and firm eye contact indicate that she's very comfortable saying this. Her body language is a statement. She then proceeds with a pseudo psychoanalysis of herself, something that's very popular among people who want to evade responsibility. And it was really a joy to just help heal somebody. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with my codependency which is another thing that I had to learn to break in this cycle, just mm -hmm. that idea of needing to fix and being drawn to people that need help, whether it's your health or whether it's your addictions. Mm -hmm. There's something about that childhood trauma mm -hmm. um, that feels as though it can be fixed through fixing people mm -hmm. versus fixing me. Yeah. In this type of context, people criticize themselves for self-interest, to portray themselves in a more favorable light. Hiding behind psychological terms is also a way to convince oneself of the alleged reasons for one's actions, even though these reasons might not be true at all. I feel like it's, it's healing that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. Yeah. Even though this is minuscule, I do feel like it's these kinds of things that create the world that we're in, mm -hmm. and the idea of not communicating, yeah. not talking about it, not clearing the air, mm -hmm. and just being as transparent. Mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. being transparent. Considering that this problem is minuscule, Jada sure is kind to even mention it. With the noun healing, she doesn't define what she means and needs to happen is devoid of agency, meaning there's no mention of who needs to heal or who should initiate the healing. Again, Jada speaks in general terms that don't hold her accountable. Likewise, she doesn't say who neglected the communicating or who should have cleared the air. There's no agency, and Jada sure doesn't like to talk about her wrongdoings or whatever we should call them at this point. So we come to the red table. So I'm in I'm in the Jada position right now. So, okay. you know, you during that time launched into an interaction mm -hmm. with August. What do you feel like um, you were looking for? Jada doesn't mirror Will's playful behavior with a serious facial expression while saying, okay. oh, you know, you she achieves two things. She lets Will know that she doesn't find it funny, and she gives him a hint to tone down what he's about to say. Will had a hard time concealing the anger he visibly felt in the moment. Watch how his words contradict his facial expressions. There's a real power in the just knowing somebody's riding with you no matter what. Yeah. Doesn't sound like real power to me. And it doesn't look like Will believes it either. I'm like, what is going on I right keep now? My wife's, wife's name. name out of your yes, mouth, yes, right? And yes. I'm like, this clip speaks volumes about Jada's mindset, as if Will calling her his wife was the real shock. Between the lines, then, she already makes it clear that there was no reason for Will to defend her honor, because there was no honor to defend in the first place. She's distancing herself from Will, making his actions sound incomprehensible, even from her perspective. And Will's still talking. He's like, oh. he's still, because now he's mad because Chris is talking to me. With this, she further distances herself from Will's actions, and to think that there were people who actually praised Will for defending his wife. And so I was like, oh, wow. And so when I got to L.A., I called him and we went out, and I haven't been able to get rid of him since. What a great love story. The kind that truly deserves a book. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get emotional here. The perspective's interesting. Jada is so irresistible that her suitors can't leave her alone, implying that nothing's too good for her. There are different stages in my marriage where Will and I decided we were not together. And we just didn't want people to know the dynamic of what was happening between us. We didn't think that that was anybody else's business. That must be why they chose to do the Red Table Talk and give people a false impression of their dynamic. 
Another one of my favorite cliches, by the way. Even though no one forced him to do this talk, to lie and pretend, the contradictions in Jada's damage control are all over the place. For me, having the emotional maturity to understand what it is to be human and what it is to make a commitment like that, that takes work. This self-praising pompous language about having the emotional maturity to know what it is to be human is Jada's way of rationalizing her own decisions to make them sound honorable and likely cope with the fact that she was never suited for marriage. Just open dialogue. You know, and we, so trust me, and, and, and I, I, that is not for the faint at heart. I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's not. It is not for the faint at heart, but I do believe that is why Will and I are still, today, married. Open dialogue is a euphemism for what she and Will as well actually wanted, to see other people. Open dialogue just sounds a lot nicer. Euphemisms are by definition self-serving. Also, there's more self-praise, as she implies that she and Will have done something that's not for the faint of heart. And to think that Jada actually tries to sell this as a good thing, as a way for other people, potentially, to keep their marriage, when in fact their marriage was built on a lie. Reason has left the building. Also, it didn't exactly look like Will was happy with this open dialogue. Next, Jada keeps emphasizing just how much unconditional love she receives from her family, because that's the kind of thing that people repeat publicly to strangers when they're unconditionally loved. It's certainly not something a celebrity who has a book she wants to sell says for self-protective purposes to anticipate objections to the contrary. Like my kids, they love every part of me. You know, they love every part of the journey. They, I, I, I mean, they are just such beautiful beings in that way. You know, just the level of love, unconditional love that they have for me and their dad. I'm glad Will did get an honorable mention on this journey. Another overused euphemism, by the way. And just in case we didn't get it the first time, Jada doesn't mind repeating. To be the recipient of that unconditional love just creates a whole nother understanding and a whole nother learning that comes with that. And so I've really been able to feel what that feels like to have that level of deep unconditional love. You know, they love every part of the journey. The negative attention, not only is it very unreliable that they love every part of this journey, it's also deceptive. Yet Jada has no problem portraying things in a positive light, which speaks volumes about her indifference to the fact that this isn't or can't be the whole truth. And the beautiful part about it is like the whole, this whole journey, as difficult as it's been, has just brought Will and I closer in such an authentic oh, way. It's about using the right terms, as if the terms themselves are enough to be perceived as authentic. Authenticity is what's missing from this conversation, which is exactly why Jada uses the word in the first place. Finding what's true between us. Wow. And it's been beautiful. It's been difficult. It's been difficult. But beautiful. And what is true between them? The fact that they went on the red table talk and pretended to not be separated. The fact that their open dialogue is obviously a big problem for Will. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> These euphemisms function as overcompensation. When people know they're on the wrong track, they'll overcompensate with positive language. Because we were in such, you know, we were just kind of in this very fragile place. And so now we're just super solid. Yeah. And so now I can actually talk about what the journey has been with her movements and hitching language. You know, we were just kind of... Jada has a hard time coming up with a reason that sounds credible. She ends up with the adjective fragile, which is an appeal to people's emotion and pity. And yes, things between Will and Jada truly sound super solid, which is something people would say when they know the opposite is true. We are in a place now that we are in a deep healing space. And we are really concentrating on healing the relationship between us. So. But wait, I thought they were in this healing process years ago. You and I were also going through a process of healing in a much different manner. Mm -hmm. We never, ever, ever thought that we would make yeah, it back. Yeah. You thought I was that, that I didn't have the girth that it was going to take to ride with I you didn't, through. Yeah. Besides, if they're in a healing process, whatever this means, Jada never tells us anything specific. 
How can she talk about this beautiful journey as a completed event when they're obviously still on it? And so now we're just super solid. Yeah. And so now I can actually talk about what the journey has been. But then again, this interview in name only isn't a place for actual questions. When I saw him get up, I was like, oh, did he and Chris decide to do this bit together? Um, yes, because it's totally conceivable that Will wouldn't have told Jada before going and that the bit would be about Jada's appearance. Jada is obviously aware of how this sounds because right after the host says that it wouldn't be a good bit, she parrots him by making a modification. A bit, because I've seen Will. It wasn't a great bit. Out. It wasn't really a great bit. Uh, right. right. And I was like, oh, this is a bit. This is a strange bit, but okay. Right. With this modification, Jada is stating the obvious that her belief that this was a bit was either very weak or non existent. This is a strange bit, but okay. Right. And next we see just how empty Jada's jargon is, as she can't even substantiate the words she's been repeating at nausea. It's what, been beautiful. What does that beauty look like yeah. for you day in and day out? So are y'all living together? It's just this mm -hmm. beautiful connection. Jada visibly dislikes this question. There's Again, this the adverb just oversimplifies her explanation, or lack thereof, and points to the existence of another thought, likely the opposite thought, that either this connection isn't beautiful, or what she said doesn't even make sense to her. Pro we will. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You Not will. right now. But you will. But yeah. You will. yeah. Oh yeah. That's Why yeah. do you say that with such a clarity? I think I know the answer to that one. She says it with such clarity because she didn't know how else to get out of the situation. Let's watch it again. So are y'all living together? It's just this beautiful connection. Pro we will. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You Not will. right now. But you will. But yeah. You, will. yeah. Yeah. you know, but right now I really do enjoy my space. Yeah. yeah. I am a, my mother's only child. Yeah. Right? What does being an only child have to do with anything? Nothing, of course. It's another desperate attempt to appeal to pity. Something which Jada is so eerily good at that it suggests she's been doing it throughout her entire life. You know, but right now... I With a conjunction but, she minimizes and completely negates a talk about her and Will getting back together, and thus negates the beauty she spent two minutes talking about. Mm -hmm. And so having this time that I've had to myself has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to get to know me, you know... Jada's constant use of the expression you know, which appeals to alleged shared knowledge between two speakers or more, underlines how much more important it is to her to persuade than substantiate her statements. One of the things that I learned about you is that you love radical honesty. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet, you know, for the, for the last, since 2016, mm -hmm. you had to have been pretending a little, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't say, uh, we got to be careful with pretending, okay. mm -hmm. right? Because Will and I love each other, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so all the love that you guys have Was seen... Was real. That's real. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no pretending. No, of course there's no pretending. I mean, it's not like they literally chose to do the Red Table talk when no one forced them to. We never, ever, ever thought that we would make yeah, it back. Yeah, 25 years and counting. Mm. We ride together, we, we die, die together. together. So no, the kind of love they let people see wasn't real. All the love that you guys have was seen was real. That's real. Right. When asked about the facts that she went on talk shows and was asked about her love life, Jada says this. Well, here's the mm -hmm. thing about that. That's mm -hmm. not anybody's business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right? did you want to... She says after making intimate details of their relationship public. Here we are solid as a rock and people still confused. Yes, everything's so solid. That must be why she couldn't explain what's beautiful about their relationship. Does that beauty look like yeah. for you day in and day out? So are y'all living together? It's just this beautiful connection. To go without any relations for six years is an awful long time. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that both of you at some point had other, maybe not loves, but other partners, partners or relationships. Listen, I can only speak for myself, yeah. but you know, I had one situation and that was it. I guess that's why she spent her interview with people, hammering the point about seeing other people. And you think there is not going to be straying eyes. That, that, that didn't seem realistic at all. There are different stages in my marriage where Will and I decided we were not together. Jada talks about different stages, plural, when we couple this with her assertive listen, imperative, can, listen, listen, I can, and how fast she wants to move on. It all indicates that there were likely other situations, which is the euphemism she uses. 
there. And one of the things I've learned about your fans is they're fierce, man. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, some of them are are feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. Right? Have you read? Do you see that? Does that? Do you mm -hmm. do you well, get that? They can feel betrayed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, because life is messy. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. You know. Mm -hmm. You know. Life is messy. Not the decisions that she's made. Avoiding accountability comes in all shapes and sizes. And unfortunately, it's not anybody's business yeah. of what's going on in the most inner sanctum yeah. of, of our house. After she's voluntarily given these details in other conversations, answers don't get any more deceptive than this. The deception was foreshadowed by Jada's pompous work choice. Inner sanctum. Yeah. Bad marriage for life. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible.